What's up everybody, Praxis Visuals here, and today I'm going to show you guys how to make a lightsaber effect completely within After Effects, no plugins required. Let's go and see the video. Alright guys, so for this video, you're going to need a few things, you're going to need one, After Effects, you're going to need two, a piece of footage with you or somebody swinging around a prop lightsaber that emits light, if you have a prop that actually does emit light, or like light, having a prop that emits light will make your job a lot more easier because when you're rotoscoping, which if you don't know, rotoscoping just basically means that you're masking one part of your video and you're keyframing it throughout time, making it move and animate. Um, but as you're rotoscoping, finding something that is bright white or is a solid color will make your job that much easier. Going to a specific frame here, it is very blurred. His, in this case, the background is very dark, and you can easily spot the blade right here. Um, but let's just say your video, you don't have a prop that emits light, your background is overexposed with white and you're swinging it around very fast meaning your blur, your lightsaber is very blurred that will make the job of the roto artist or you or whomever very difficult when you're trying to make this effect so anyway let's go ahead and get into this let's see here so we're going to go ahead and start off with making a new layer it's a white solid because this is going to represent the core of our lightsaber we're going to rename this to core there we go. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off for now. Go up. Oh, well, hold on. Let's maybe find the first frame that our lightsaber comes in. Go up to the pen tool here with our core selected. Go and let's go ahead and start making the core of our lightsaber. Go ahead and click and drag to make the points here. There we go. And then connect it. And then, well, what I usually do is I get these little points here that are actually a part of the length of the blade. I pull those in because, you know, blades usually aren't, you know, warping like that. Um, and, you know, in some cases they are, but I try to fake that. I try to get around that. Okay. Cool. Okay, so now you're probably thinking it's going over the head. That's the next step after this very, very long step. Okay, so that is our lightsaber blade. What we're going to have to do here is we're going to go into our masks, mask one, and mask path. Right here, this is the beginning of our rotoscoping journey. So now what we're going to have to do is mask off every single frame the lightsaber is moving. Up there, maybe. This is the majority of what you're doing. Bruh, I swear. This is it. This is basically the majority of what you're going to be doing. There we go. Alright, so I'm just going to fast forward here and just, you can see what I'm doing, but you get the gist. I am making little keyframes here, and uh, this, is, this is basically rotoscoping right here. This is basically it. All right, so let's go ahead and see this in fast motion. Okay, guys, so I just did the majority of the work you're going to be doing. This is the hard stuff that nobody wants to do. <sighs> Let me say, it is time consuming. And uh, like I said earlier, if your footage is kind of buns and your prop is kind of cheeks, it will be harder. And as you can see, I did not finish, but I could go a lot further. And I just killed, I think, probably 15, 10 minutes in here just doing this. So yeah, okay. So next step is we have to roto out a few parts of where his head or his, in one of the cases here, his finger 
overlaps the lightsaber blade like right there I gotta cut out his finger and a part of his head and I'm only gonna do this for demonstration purposes technically I could have just rotated right here and did this little box but I want to show you guys what to do alright so next step layer new solid make it black and this is just gonna be the way to separate the lightsaber from the footage it is actually really cool here wait let me just trim this so make sure that it doesn't go past the part there we go this is actually really neat when you're sitting just viewing it um, so yeah put this black solid in very important all right go ahead and get your comp you have here bring it into a new comp if I can do that there we go and then what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're going to grab da, 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 the footage itself put this trim so I'm gonna go ahead and just copy and paste this one da, 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 da. yeah put the saber demo uh, below it this is the footage itself put the comp you just made above it put it to screen there we go next step we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna go ahead and duplicate our footage put it over our lightsaber you know what? I'm just gonna rename this we'll go and just name this uh, core we're going to name this top layer, uh, let's say, uh, Tom Roto. Thank you for this awesome footage, Tom. Tom Toto. Okay. So what we're going to go ahead and do, let's go ahead and just turn this layer off so we can see when our lightsaber clips onto his head. So that's our first frame. We're going to go ahead and just really make a very basic head shape. We're going to go and click and drag some points. I want to make a few because we're going to use this same mask over and over again. So we're going to have as much points as possible. But again, don't go overkill with it. You don't want to have too many and have to move so much. There we go. That seems about enough. Okay. Cool, cool. So now you can see our lightsaber blade is back and we can control what part is in front of the lightsaber blade. In this case, it is Tommy Tom Tom's head here. There we go. Looking solid. Okay. So we have the first frame. We're going to go ahead and hit the opacity. Well, let's go into the opacity in the mask, I guess. Let's go ahead and hit mask path so that we can move it each frame. And we're going to do mask opacity because we don't want this mask just staying on our shot the entire time and getting in the way of our saber. So in this one, it'll be 100%. and the next frames, it'll be 100%. But let's just wait for a time where it's not 100%. Aha, big brain moves. There we go. So you can kind of just see what we're doing here. This I'm not going to speed through this because this is very simple simple procedure I guess there we go there you go and I think yeah I'll just do this little corner here okay so at that point we're gonna go ahead and add a keyframe for the opacity and the next frame we're gonna hit it to zero so now this mask path will not get in our way of our saber so the next point we gotta do is his finger and I made a jump right there let's go ahead and just put a little little fingy there cool cool alright let's go ahead and hit the opacity and make it a hundred percent so we can see and then we'll make this zero so zero to hundred and we're just gonna mask his finger out All right, cool. So now we have our figure roto completed or whatever obscures your blade roto done. We're going to go ahead and move forward to the next steps. So we're going to go ahead and turn off your footage layer so it's a back, black background. And we're going to go ahead and we have to make your roto of your uh, whatever obscures your lightsaber blade 
to be black. So at this point, do whatever you want to do to make it black. I usually just go to exposure and I turn this all the way down. There we go. So it's nothing but your blade and a black background. Alright, at this point we're going to go ahead and grab our second comp we made here. We're going to bring it to another one. So it's just your blade on a black background. And then we're going to go ahead and do is set the blending mode to screen. And we're going to go to effect, blur and sharpen, fast box blur. Repeat edge pixels and we're going to duplicate it a few times. Maybe about, I usually do about four or five. I'm going to do five in this case. And right now we're just going to go ahead and create the, the glow of your blade. So a rule of thumb I usually do, and this is a mistake I see in a lot of videos, is that your blade or your your core of your lightsaber blade is very either hazy or it's too crisp. You need to either, you know, make it one or the other. And my rule, of, my, my rule of thumb is that the further away your lightsaber blade is, the more crisp it's going to be, and the closer up it's going to be more uh, fuzzier. And that's just you know distance. You know, I I believe that the lightsaber blade is actually more of like a really thin laser, and that we just perceive it to be a core white because it has such a strong you know glow. So that's just my rule of thumb, and that really just ups your, uh, your result in the end. So you don't have this really crisp blade. It just doesn't it? Kind of just doesn't look good. So what I usually do is I set this first one to about two, and I set the blur iterations to about two as well. So it's just very faint, but it does exist. And uh, at this point, all of these uh, adjustments are going to be just depending on your uh, your scene. But what I usually do is I just bump it up like this first one. I'll make probably about there. And this next one, I'm going to go as far as I can before I start seeing these black rings that go around your blade. So I go right about, right about there. This next one, I'm going to push it out probably about right about there. And this last one, push it really far out. There we go. So it's really just big glow because when we start adding color to it and gamma, it's going to start bringing that glow down so we want as big as possible. But of course, if your lightsaber is really far away, you want your glow to be very small. All right, cool, cool, cool. Uh, the next thing I usually do is I go to the very bottom layer, which is the core of our lightsaber, and I go to the opacity and I turn it down to about 70. That way it's, just, it's not just a, a blaring white it's actually somewhat uh, faded or maybe I'll try 60 yeah 60 is better cool so now we have ooh, hold on that's better Went a little too far on a few of them there we go cool there we go very nice alright let's go ahead and get our glow comp here and we'll bring it to another one and now I guess this is where one could say where the fun begins. Shut up. All right, so what we're gonna go ahead and do is bring in our footage. Let's do. Uh, let's get the footage from the very beginning here. We'll just copy and paste it. Put it on the bottom of our effect. Set the effect layer to screen. That way we can see it. There we go. Looking very nice. Cool, cool. We'll just use this frame here. And we're going to go to Effect, Color Correction, Color Balance. And at this point, we're starting to make the color of our lightsaber blade. And if you want to make yours green, make it green. If you want to make yours red, make it red. You get where I'm going. Uh, but I like to make it blue because blue is a very fun color to play with. Um, and, you know, honestly, you can look at this and see all the blue. Okay, blue, 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 done. Nah, you don't want to do this, bro. You don't want to do it. Trust me. So, okay, but if you want to make the most accurate blue to the movies, follow me. So turn on Preserve Luminosity. Set the first one down at the bottom to 100. The next one to negative 30. Next one after that, do negative 50. And then the mid-tone blue balance is going to be 100. Next one is going to be 40. The next one after that is going to be negative 30. And after that, it's going to be 20 and 10. There we go. Okay, you could stop there, but I'm not going to. 
So the next thing we're going to go and do is we're going to kind of crush it a little bit more so that this whitish blue is going to turn more of a blue, like a dark uh, heat blue. So this is what we're going to do next. Go to Levels and under Color Correction. And we're just going to start crushing it a little bit using Gamma and the input white. So in RGB, starting off, we're going to go ahead and set this to 75, or 0.75, sorry. There we go. Set this to 32,000. There we go, not much of a difference, but you know. And then under the channel, go to blue. And we're going to set this to, let's say, a little bit of a higher number here. So that way it really just does fade away from the glow outwards. And then after that, we're going to set this to 42,000. Now we can see we're really starting to get an effect here that really looks like the movies. It looks like it almost has this uh, a green tinge to it. There we go. Looks very good. Okay, at this point, you could stop. You could. But I'm going to go a little bit further. Let's go ahead and bring in another effect. Go to Color Correction and go to Exposure. And what we're going to go ahead and do is make the lightsaber pulsate. That way, so, and like in this case, the lightsaber is always moving. But let's say in your shot, you're holding it still and it's not doing anything. Well, it's kind of boring. You want it to be doing something, so make it pulsate its light. Make it, you know, go in and out between brightness and dimness. So we're going to go ahead and add an expression to the exposure. And we're going to just do a wiggle expression. So do wiggle, parentheses, not nine, parentheses. Do 15, comma, 0.5, end parentheses. There we go. So now if, let's just go to the end here where there's just a blade by itself. We'll turn it off so you can see what we're doing here it just kind of flickers you know so that way if you're ever just having it standing still or whatever you want it to be doing something so it's you know it really sells the effect that it's a hot beam of energy that will cut through anything you know and that's what that that uh, last step there will do that it's just kind of it's going in and out almost like a battery is powering it adds a little bit of life to it there we go one last thing we're going to do here, we're going to backtrack a little bit, go back to the Roto first comp you made, and we're going to go ahead and give this some motion blur. That way it's not just, you know, one solid, you know, core moving around. You want it to be moving around in space in your camera, thus you're going to start seeing motion blur. Now, again, this, this kind of depends on your scene. Uh, when you film this, you might want to have a little bit more uh, of a, uh, a higher no, sorry, scratch that, a lower shutter speed. Um, that way you can get your blade to actually blur in your shot. But that also means you're going to want to follow the same rule in After Effects. So go ahead and turn motion blur on for your core and motion blur on for your uh, scene here. And if we just go back and kind of see, it adds blur to your moving mask. And that just makes it 10 times more realistic in your scene and 10 times more realistic for the effect. So that is it. You can kind of see here what we got going on. Very nice, very, very good looking, I think. I think I probably nailed the color a little bit. If you, you can always tweak the settings I gave you. I'm always fixing them and moving them around a little bit just to see what else I can make. And uh, that is basically it for the tutorial, guys. I hope you guys like, comment, subscribe. I hope you guys make this this effect in all of your videos or whatever videos you want to make. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys in the next video. See you later.